In this video, I'm going to show you how you can uh, use your train unit model to segment the nuclei, and then how we can um, save a model to be run in Fiji as well. So we train the unit model. Now we can try to process images. So I'm going to open running notebook. Again, always the same. So in that case, I'm going to uh, so define uh, in polynuclei, we have a test folder with three images that we want to segment. So I'm going to select this folder. Then I'm going to select uh, the model that gave a good result. So we saw that uh, E minus two, E minus four were pretty similar. E minus four. And in output directory, I don't have any output, so I'm going to create one. I'm going to go back to my folder here in datasets, polynuclei, and test. I have the images. So here I'm going to create an image. I'm going to, uh, enter, so I'm going to call uh, results. Uh, which is, it doesn't make sense because I'm in the unit. That's going to be unit, but results, and uh, it's going to be uh, scores. Because here, um, we'll have to do some past processing as um, we're going to extract scores for contours and in a nuclear and background. So we, we won't have the actual nuclei. So I'm going to uh, check the score because it's going to be more informative than, than just the maximum intensity, uh, the maximum, the maximum uh, score at each pixel as we need to do some past processing. Uh, so it's better to take into account the probabilities to then try to, to identify the individual nuclei than uh, just taking uh, you know, the maximum score at each uh, pixel. We're going to lose information in that case, so we need to check score. Uh, we have one channel that P, three classes, background, in the nuclei, and nuclear contours. We chose to uh, use image, uh, an imaging field of 256 by 256, so now it's fine. We can run it. Processing. So as usual, first one takes a little bit more time because it needs to uh, load the model and it goes a little bit faster. So here we see two and three, and it's down. So if I go in result scores, I have three images that I can open with PG. And let's have a look at what it is. And responding image, so you have better idea of what it is, and um, you can see it's, it's bad, uh, actually it looks not that bad, let's uh, try to zoom in in a region, similar region here, so see that this corresponds to this point, and so uh, even if we really zoom in, we can see that, you know, isolated nuclei are easily identified with the inner nucleus and the contour. When we have nuclei that are touching, we see that it's, yeah, it does a very good job. We have a high score for the, uh, the first uh, class in red, which is the contour. And, and here it's also good. It's, it's yellow because the score is high for both class 1, 0 0.94 and class 2, 0 0.92, still higher for the contours. Now we have here, you know, it starts to be a little bit more difficult to make a decision, and here probably even harder. So when we look at this, we see that probably we'll be able to separate those two nuclei, this not, and maybe, maybe that's correct. And, uh, and here, uh, same kind of uh, so we'll, we'll see, so there's a, an image J macro to do the past processing, which is explained in the, in the course how, how, it, how it works. But before that, uh, I'm going to uh, first save the model, the same model, to be run in, in Fiji. So I'm going to uh, close this, shut it down, and And I'm going to kill it from here. So I do Control C twice, and that kills everything. 
And I'm going to use, so the virtual environment, we define for um, epithelium and stroma um, segmentation. So we could do the segmentation in Fiji. So I'm going to deactivate my virtual environment, Conda deactivate. And then I'm going to do Conda activate and the name of my virtual environment. So if you don't remember, you can do Conda. It's, I think it's minus minus info. I think it's, uh, yes, maybe. I don't remember in which order it is, if it's like this or on the info minus minus R. Yes, so that's this one. Conda info minus minus R gives you the different uh, virtual environment that were defined. So you see, I have uh, several others. Uh, the workshop of is the one you know, that was uh, designed with TensorFlow 2, so which we used for, for UNET for image classification. And the TF1 of is the one that is with TensorFlow 1 that we used to. Uh, save models uh, that can be run in Fiji. So I'm going to activate this one again, Conda activate TF1 of, and uh, if you didn't create this one, you can go back to the previous video where I show how to do it. And I'm open in notebook again, check it in notebook. Right, so I can close this one. So I'm going to go in local unit, and there's this uh, notebook we already used, which is called Saving Model for Fiji Plugin. So I'm going to run it. So still the same, you know, codes, now parameters. So the model I want to save is the one I just used, which is the one with E minus four. This one. Select the output directory. I'm going to put it in the same output. And I'm going to call it look now on the segmentation unit for example we have one channel three classes 256 by 256 i'm going to save it so we have a bunch of warnings we also have uh, info but it ran well so if i go back now to my folder in unit in model now I have something which is called the okay, segmentation unit which I can call from unit. So if I go back to Fiji, which I can call from Fiji, sorry. So I'm going to open, so I close the image. I'm going to open the same image. And I'm not in training, sorry, in test, this one. Now, um, it has to be, um, has to be a multiple of 256 by 256, otherwise that won't work. So I'm going to open the calculator. 1868 divided by 256, that's seven. So I'm going to have to do something like eight times 256. It's going to be 2048. It's going to be my year works. And if I look at the other one, 1400, just yeah, divided by two fifty six, it's five. If I do six times two fifty six, oops, sorry, six times two fifty six, five fifteen thirty six. So I'm gonna um, resize this image. You can do it in PG. You go to image, adjust. Canvas size, I'm going to put a canvas size of 2048 by 15. This doesn't matter. Here it's going to be center, and everything that is outside is going to be uh, filled with zeros. All right? So now it's in the right format. And now I can run it. So if you remember, we used the uh, CSB deep again. A CSV deep and now run your network. It's a window here. So the normalization is between 1 and 1998 inside. I don't know why I can't change. So that's really a problem. But yeah, I can't. This is weird because on some computers I was able to do it. Anyway, so it's not going to be an exact same normalizations. We we're going to have slightly different results, but we should. 
And the type size is 256 by 256. I'm going to choose the right network, which is going to be in, and if I go back in my desktop, folder, local unit, models, nuclearized implementation shift. Now I can run it with another window that pops up. It's executing. And then that's gonna, so it just take a little bit of time. Display, and here we go. So we have the first class, second class, and the third class. First thing we can do is just to adjust the canvas size. If I go back to image, adjust canvas size, and put it to the previous format, which was 1868 by 1400, right? Now I have actual size of my uh, input image uh, and I can if I want to look at different um, classes together I can go to color and make composite and now I have something that really uh, looks similar to what we had before right and so the last part is to go from this uh, scores for each class to actual um, individual nuclei if I go back to my folder here, if you go in the unit folder, there's a macro that, that is entitled um, semantic to instance. So semantic segmentation obtained with uh, unit to instance segmentation is going to correspond to individual nuclei. So here is the macro. So again, if you want to have a better idea of what it does, you can go to the show you and go uh, here in the courses, if you go to uh, So if you want to know what it corresponds to, you can uh, go back to the courses and in instance segmentation. Uh, there's a uh, there's a, a schematic view of the pipeline that uh, shows you the different uh, steps. And what it works like this: you have two parameters, one threshold on the background. So it means that everything, every pixel that has a score of 0 0.95 for the background, it's going to be part of the background. And then you have a threshold on nuclei minus contours because we uh, we do the uh, contour component that we subtract to the nuclei component and we have a, a threshold of 0 0.3. It means that uh, even if uh, the, the contour component is lower than the nuclei component, we're going to still try to separate. Basically, it's, that's what it means. Just because um, contours are harder to estimate, and then if you want to go through all of the, the different steps up there, and uh, there are commentaries, so you can try to understand how it works. I'm gonna run it, uh, and I'm gonna actually uh, solve use. Uh, the results I got uh, when I run uh, the uh, go back to the desktop, the results I got from the notebook. So if you go to local unit, we use the running to actually get uh, results scores. That's how I defined it. All right. And so that's the input. So that's the scores. Look like this. And I'm going to define a new folder actual for so local units data sets nuclei in new folder. It's going to be results, and that time going to be individual nuclei. Right. So 
just ask me to open the image and then it does a few things. Uh, so here, first image is down, second image is processing, and now third image processing, and down. And so now we can have a look at the, the results. If I go back folder here, in unit data sets nuclei. This is individual nuclei. So here you have a different intensity for each individual nucleus. As it goes from there to there, it's hard to release something. You can use uh, the glass beyond dark. It's going to be easier to visualize even though the intensity is not random. We have this kind of flies. So when you don't know, you can look at the intensity. For example, here it's uh, 65, 63, and here it's 65, 63. So here it's the same, same nucleus. Uh, 66, 67, 66, 63. So probably, you know, we didn't use that augmentation with that augmentation might have been a little bit better. Let's go back to the original image. Here, the result. That we can even use the annotator plugin. This one is yeah, about what that actually responds to. And you can see in the uh, so in this program here, it's not that bad here, that's harder. So in the because the signal is really lower and wasn't able to separate. And sometimes it can hear, it doesn't separate well, and here the signal is hard, and so on. To make a decision doesn't make that much sense, but here when we make a signal area like this, you can see that we are able to actually extract um, cells that have a uh, epithelial uh, phology. So it's not. It's definitely not that bad, actually. You can see here, for example, definitely have this um, of epithelial morphology for cells. 